Hey everyone, it's your girl Layla. Welcome back to my channel. Okay guys, welcome to Spooktober episode 3. I'm sorry this one is a little bit late, but this video is going up the same day that I'm filming it. I just got back from Ontario and you know what that means? That means my last two episodes of Spooktober are gonna be places in Ontario. So the first one of course is going to be today's episode. So if you guys are not already subscribed, please go ahead click the subscribe button below. I upload three times a week, Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. And of course all of October, every Wednesday is going to be something spooky with my Spooktober series. Also, so how do you guys like my intro? I actually really, really love my new Halloween themed intro for Spooktober this year. So I can't believe we're almost done this series for another year. It is crazy. Today's video, without further ado, we're going to be talking about the Screaming Tunnel. And this is located, of course, in Ontario in the town of Niagara-on-the-Lake. So the Screaming Tunnel was built in the 1800s and it is made out of limestone. So these days, the tunnel is filled with graffiti, of course, and there's algae and vines and all of that good stuff hanging down from the tunnel today. But back then, this was a drainage tunnel for the Grand Trunk Railway, which is now the CN Railway. And basically the tunnel was made to prevent water from staying on the tracks and it would drain through the tunnel and go into the valley below. So it was beneficial for both parties, for the farmers below so their lands could get water and for the train so that they didn't have water on the tracks. And this tunnel was also used by farmers to transport their animals as well as their goods in the safety of not being on the tracks because the train tracks were really busy back then and this was a safe way so that they didn't have to cross the tracks with their goods and their animals. The tunnel is 16 feet in height and 125 feet long or 38 meters. That's quite a big tunnel. I actually was expecting it to be a lot smaller as well as a lot shorter in length from what I've seen photos of and videos of online, but it is actually a pretty big tunnel. So a fun fact about this tunnel is it was featured in a Stephen King horror film called The Dead Zone. So yes, this tunnel is so creepy that it was featured in a Stephen King horror movie. So let's get right into why the tunnel is even haunted in the first place and the legends behind it. So there's a few different versions of the story. I'm gonna go through the three main versions of the story. Why is the Screaming Tunnel so haunted? Well, it holds a dead girl's screams. And there's three different stories, three main stories anyways, about what occurred in the tunnel. And there is different versions of the story depending on who you ask, which local you ask. And this tunnel is visited by tourists and people from across the world because this is one of the most haunted roads in the world. So the first version and the most popular story is that a farm nearby the tunnel was on fire one night and a girl ran out of the fire and she was on fire herself. Her clothing was on fire, her hair was on fire. Before she could find help, she collapsed in the middle of the tunnel and died. So of course she was screaming because this was a terrible, terrible tragedy and a really, really you know, a really painful way to die is getting burned to death. So she was screaming because she was burning to death. She succumbed to her wounds without being able to find help and she burned to death. So that is just one version of the story. There's a couple more that are more eerie. So another version of the story is this girl was murdered in the tunnel by her own father and they were going through some custody battles. He was in a fit of rage and murdered her in the tunnel. And the next version of the story is probably the most heart-wrenching and the most horrible. So the third version of the story is this girl was actually essayed in the tunnel and her perpetrator burned her to death to get rid of the evidence and she was screaming as she was burning to death. So 
three very different versions of the story. So no matter what version of the story you believe, a girl died in this tunnel and her ghost haunts the tunnel today. So if you do decide to visit the Screaming Tunnel, there's a few things that you need to know. First of all, if you do want to go ghost hunting, if you want to take your spirit box or your Ouija board, I highly don't recommend taking a Ouija board in any haunted location or even just messing with that. It's not something that I recommend myself, but if you guys wanna do it, by all means, you can, but I personally don't recommend it. I definitely prefer spirit box sessions. I think that they're less, less likely to go wrong in my personal opinion. So you can go into the tunnel at night if you want something creepy to do in the area. There's not a whole lot around the tunnel and I'll get into that in a second but I want to get into how you can see this girl's ghost and how you can experience the screaming tunnel for yourself and what I didn't do because I did not come here at night I came here kind of around the evening time but you can come here at night so apparently according to legends what you need to do is you need to go into the tunnel around midnight you need to walk into the middle of the tunnel, light a match along the limestone wall, a wooden match, and you will hear the girl screaming. And then if you walk a little bit more, your light will burn out by a gust of wind. So yeah, that is what you're supposed to do at the screaming tunnel if you want to experience this girl's ghost. But yeah, like I mentioned, I didn't go there at night. I went there during the evening time when it was still daylight. If you guys are looking for the screaming tunnel yourself, you can find it on Google on different websites. However, the best way I can describe it to you is it is 100 meters away from the end of Warner Road in Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario. So there's not a whole lot of anything in this area. It's a lot of farmlands and a lot of vineyards and that sort of thing. So there is one vineyard and I think one house on this road and that's about it. The Screaming Tunnel is very obvious and it's going to be on your right side. You can't miss it. Like I said, it's a pretty big tunnel and it's near the end of the road. So in this area, there's also two hiking trails and the tunnel is part of two hiking trails if you are interested in that. I didn't even know that until I walked through the tunnel and on the other side of the tunnel, there is a bunch of different trails that you can go on, which I found really kind of eerie. So this tunnel actually leads to the Bruce hiking trail as well as the Laura Secord legacy trail. So yes, you can do a spooky hike during October in this area as well. I keep finding these haunted places that are in rural areas, in mountain areas, in places that you wouldn't expect them to be. I did a whole video last week on haunted slash creepy hiking trails that you could do. Well, this one probably takes the cake as one of the most haunted places in the world. So I wanna give you guys my personal experience with this place as well as do kind of like a walkthrough slash tour because I did film walking through as well as walking out of the tunnel that day. I went with my friend and my fiance, but I was the only one who actually went through the tunnel and it was a little bit, you know, a little bit creepy knowing the story behind it and the fact that it's haunted. My fiance did not want to walk through the tunnel because it had some water. Of course, this is a drainage tunnel, so there's going to be a little bit of water on the ground, but it wasn't enough to deter me from walking into the tunnel and seeing it and experiencing it for myself. So with that being said, this tunnel is a little bit creepy even during the evening time. It's cold inside, but that's to be expected. Of course, you're going into, if you're going into anything like caves and tunnels and that sort of thing, it's gonna be a couple of degrees colder than it is outside. So yes, it is, cold and damp inside the tunnel especially if you're going in a season where there's rain or if there's just been a storm it's going to be a little bit more damp inside the tunnel and then when i walked through to the other side i noticed that there were trails and i was like very confused i was like where do these trails go i didn't know that there was a hike nearby but yeah i mean i didn't really have any anything crazy to report other than I felt cold inside the tunnel, which was expected. I did have an eerie feeling where I wasn't completely alone. And after I filmed the clip 
when I walked through the tunnel, I did film a little bit of a clip saying that I found some trails and this is what the tunnel looks like. I felt like I, I wasn't really alone, if that makes sense. And I did look around me because I was like, maybe there's somebody on the trail. There's probably a human, like an actual human on the hiking trail or something like that. I don't know, but I didn't feel like I was completely alone or maybe like an animal or something. The thing about Ontario is there's not a lot of you know bears or cougars or anything like that but if i was on a trail in alberta and i felt that uneasy i would have thought a cougar was watching me if that makes sense so it didn't feel completely alone and i don't know if that's because like i said i knew in my head that this place was haunted and that it was haunted by a girl I don't know I I can't explain it to you it was like a weird eerie sort of uneasy feeling and I didn't stick around for very long like I walked through the tunnel did that clip kind of looked around a little bit and then I went back right away so that was my experience with the screaming tunnel I want to get into the tour slash clips that I took in the area right now I'll include those right here So today's video took me to the Screaming Tunnel here in Niagara Falls, Ontario. It's uh, in the town of Niagara on the Lake and the tunnel is right behind me there. It's uh, a little bit spooky. It's a little bit cold in there, a lot cold in there, but yeah, that's that. This is just off of a back road. There is a ton of water right now draining into the tunnel, so it was kind of hard to walk through. But I actually did and behind me if you keep going that way there's some trails and stuff that you can take I just randomly noticed it right now when I went through the tunnel but yeah we're gonna go back through and I'll show you how it looks it's a really really cool place actually
So I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video for Spooktober and I will see you guys next week for my last episode. I'm so sad. My last episode for 2022 for Spooktober. If you guys are not already subscribed and you love these kind of videos, leave a comment below telling me your favorite one or something that you suggest that I look into and yeah that is pretty much it for this video if you guys are not already subscribed please go ahead click the subscribe button below i upload three times a week sunday wednesday and friday and i will see you guys soon bye